Hello friends, you must have all encountered complications on the medial side of the proximal tibia whenever you are addressing tibial plateau fractures. So in this presentation, I will be highlighting the points by which you can prevent the complications especially of the wound descents, plate exposure and skin necrosis on the medial side of the proximal tibia. So usually whenever there is proximal tibia fracture or tibial plateau fracture, it is a high energy trauma. And you can see there are some indirect signs of this trauma like ectopic bruising. Often there is redness, swelling and these signs often delay the definitive management of the tibial plateau fracture. The medial plate is usually required whenever there is medial condyle fracture or when there is postromedial fragment which requires a postromedial buttress plate. So if we see the cross section of the femur, there is a complete thick layer of muscles that surround the bone. But when we come to proximal tibia, you see, while on the lateral side, the soft tissue thickness is quite thick. But here on the medial side, you see it is quite thin. This is patellar tendon and this is the anteromedial aspect. So anteromedial zone is the part where the thickness of soft tissue is very thin. While as we go posteriorly, that means posteromedially, the thickness increases and we can see the muscle layer also appears on the posteromedial side here, which is representing the popliteus, soleus and gastrocnemius muscles. As we go more distally, that means the metaphyseal area, again the thickness of the soft tissue on the anteromedial side is very thin. And as we go more anteriorly, this thin part represents the shin part. And here, the tibia is almost in the subcutaneous plane. That means you make a nick, you will see the bone directly. And as we go towards the diaphyseal side, again, the same thing happens. You see, the soft tissue layer is quite thin. So any incision placed on this zone is unsafe. That means you need to avoid placement of your incisions on the anteromedial side of tibia, especially in tibial plateau fractures. Why? Because the soft tissue is already compromised and making an incision over the compromised soft tissue can result in wound descents. So I'll be showing you all these points in coming slides. So you see the blisters often appear more on the medial side. The thin soft tissue is absorbing whole of the stress that has resulted in the fracture. While in case of the other bones which have thick muscle layer, the stress and the damage is getting resolved by the thick muscle layer. So that's why the blisters often appear on the thin soft tissue while they do not appear frequently on the muscular areas. So when you see mm. such blisters, you often delay the management. You wait for the disappearance of the blisters, you wait for the wrinkles to appear, then only you operate. But still, the soft tissue has not perfectly healed. So you have to carefully plan your incisions. Like here in this example, you see the incision is placed on the anteromedial side of the proximal tibia. This is the shin part, this is the posterior soft tissue and the incision is directly coming over the anteromedial surface of the proximal tibia. And you see the surgeon is trying hard to make the skin approximate but that is not happening despite of all attempts. So you see here the circulation of this skin layer is coming from the base. It is directly coming from the layers that are close to the bone. So first thing that you have done here, you have placed a plate here and that plate is actually hampering the blood flow to this layer. So what will happen? It is not going to heal because the blood flow is not coming in this particular direction. For healing, the blood flow has to be there on the margins of the wound, but that is not happening because the base is already compromised. You need a vascular bed on which the soft tissue can heal. So what you can do? You can put your incision somewhere else. Like you can place your incision just behind the posteromedial border of the tibia. So you see the part here is subcutaneous. You can place your incision somewhere here. By that you'll be able to avoid placement of your incision directly over the non-vascular area. Here, so you see if you are planning for placement of two plates, one plate is coming here on the anteromedial side, one plate is coming here on the posteromedial side. So what you can do, you can simply put your incision just behind the posteromedial border of the tibia. Here also, it is coming just behind the posteromedial border of the tibia. So ultimately, the healing is going to occur because the base part is not getting compromised. Also, you have good soft tissue bulk here. You have good muscle bulk here that is going to bring vascularity to your incision site. But if you place your incision somewhere here, definitely the healing is going to be compromised. So what you can do, you can simply palpate the posteromedial border of tibia before planning your incision. So like here, I'm palpating the posteromedial border of the metaphyseal area of tibia step by step, like here in the proximal tibia near the joint. So I have marked the posteromedial border of tibia and it is the proximal extension of the border if I plan for a longer incision. 
so your incision should be behind this line that you have drawn for the posteromedial border you can place your anteromedial plate and behind that you can place your posteromedial plate the posteromedial plate will not result in any complications because you have good amount of muscles that will provide vascularity to the incision site but your incision should not be here in the anteromedial region now another concern so taking a good incision is not sufficient you have to choose a good wound closure modality as well like many people place stapler in this area but what stapler do they create so many constriction in this zone so while the wound may heal you can experience marginal necrosis in this area and also these steppers are creating a closed dead space that means they are not allowing the blood to come out so ultimately what will happen the healing may appear in this zone but ultimately the blood that has collected inside in the dead space will come out later and the patient will complain of constant oozing of the wound on the medial side so you have to avoid stapler in this zone now the alternative of stapler you can use the sutures interrupted sutures but again you see the sutures that have been placed here are appropriate in this zone but here you see there are multiple constrictions so, so the sutures that are placed on the medial side should be tension free they should not have any tension you can place loose sutures but do not create constrictions because again i told you healing of this incision site is already in a compromised location and creating constrictions like here 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 and here can actually compromise with the blood flow to this zone and that compromised blood flow will result in wound necrosis so like here thus you see the sutures are almost tension free there is not any constriction visible here so you see if you are seeing constrictions like these that means your sutures are not good better use low profile sutures like 20 nylon sutures that do not create tension like this this is number one silk while this is 20 nylon suture these sutures allow some amount of soakage to happen so some amount of soakage has to happen otherwise what will happen the blood may remain collected inside in the dead space and that will result in later wound necrosis and also it will not allow the skin layer to get approximated to the vascular bed that we want for the healing so dead space that which has a collection is not good for your wound healing like this patient had a good wound healing here is now another thing so if you are using low profile sutures even ha they have minor constriction that will not hamper the healing process like here you see there are minor constrictions in the zone but the wound is healing well because these constrictions are minimal and these low profile sutures are not putting much strain on your wound ultimately these wounds are going to heal because you see there are no major constriction in the zone and the sutures are placed wide apart so you have to avoid overcrowding of the sutures like here you see there are too many constrictions the surgeon has placed a good incision that is behind the posteromedial border this shiny area is the posteromedial border of the tibia and the incision is behind it still it is going to have some necrosis because you see there are so many constrictions visible here even after taking mattress you have to avoid constriction rather what you can do you can avoid overcrowding of the sutures no need to place mattress sutures you can place simple sutures but there should not be any constriction visible here so this kind of closure can result in skin necrosis like this so the constriction part which is having maximum constriction is going to necrose now here in this example you see there is swelling present and also there is erythema in this side and the surgery was already delayed for a month so that was a time probably further delay would have hampered the patient outcome so the patient was taken to OR and operated it was a bicondylar fracture again one incision is on the lateral side and another incision is on the medial side but again you see whilst the surgeon has tried to place a posteromedial incision that, that means just behind the posteromedial border of tibia this shiny area is the posteromedial border but you see there is overcrowding of the sutures there are so many constrictions here ultimately on the day 2 of the surgery there is visible necrosis of the margins in this zone because this is almost like strangulating the wound in season there are so many constrictions here that are going to create necrosis so ultimately the wound had a significant necrosis in this zone but the surgeon is still lucky why because one the plate he has placed is on the anteromedial side here and the incision is behind that so if he would have placed the incision on the anteromedial side that means somewhere here there would have been direct exposure of the plate but ultimately since the plate is not in this area the wound healed well just by regular dressing so this was the two months follow up of this patient so you see the healing has appeared because the plate is in this zone that means on the anteromedial side 
here so he, the surgeon was lucky because the insulin was on the posteromedial side and that means here so even when you have complications on the posteromedial side wounds they do heal well without need for any major intervention because ultimately the critical point is to avoid insulin directly over the plate and there's another modality that i would like to highlight and it is going to give you good healing outcomes is the subcuticular closure so with subcuticular closure what you are doing you actually placing stress on a minimal zone like here the stress will be only in the zone there are no chances of any constriction and it is going to save your time also because taking a subcuticular suture is going to take less time than the interrupted suture so why not placing that if you have some wound opening because some may argue that the subcuticular sutures may not have the strength to handle the early mobilization of the patient then you can place a few interrupted staplers like i placed here and ultimately the healing will happen without any wound complications and also you have to place a drain on the medial side to avoid any dead space collection there so this modality i would like to prefer and i would suggest you also to use these subcuticular sutures on the on the medial side of the proximal tibia because that does not result in any constriction rather the stress or the constriction is getting distributed along whole of the incision and that will automatically improve your wound healing and this is another case a similar kind of suture so that's the subcuticular suture has been placed and you see the wound healing is good there's no necrosis some scab has formed because there was a blister in this area earlier also otherwise there are no wound healing complications similar case he was an uncontrolled diabetic and you see while some necrosis has happened along this line the remaining part of the skin is still healthy you see there is no constriction we have placed a few steppers just to avoid any wound opening during the early range of motion and this was the ultimate follow-up of this patient after two months you see it healed well and there are some concerns whether we can place the anteromedial plate and posteromedial plate with the posteromedial incision or not definitely you can what you need to do so this is a joint line you can simply extend your incision proximal to the joint line or you can extend it slightly distally also then you'll be able to expose the anteromedial part as well as the posteromedial part like here you see the incision is on the posteromedial side but by retracting we are able to expose the anteromedial part also just because we have enough leverage to retract it entirely because of the large size of wound so just do not compromise with the healing you are free to take a longer incision on the posteromedial side that is going to improve your exposure and also it will avoid putting stress on the already compromised skin on the medial side so here it is the medial plate that has been placed under the pest tendons and this is the posteromedial plate that is placed behind the posteromedial border ultimately the wound is going to heal well because the incision is going to fall over the vascular area that is having good muscle cover so these were the basic points that i want to highlight to all of you so that you can use these tips for your surgical planning also and if you have any queries you can just put those in comments thank you